I'm looking forward to the water, to finally getting started. From the Black Forest to the Black Sea, for eight weeks, chemistry professor Andreas Spott will swim the entire length of the Danube. 2,700 kilometers running through 10 countries, the Danube is the second longest river in Europe. Fat's mission? To combat plastic waste. Each day, four tons of microplastic from the Danube washes into the Black Sea. Fat plans to head there, braving the cold, storms, and high waves. An adventure in the name of science. The media have gathered by the Danube in Ulm for the start of his journey. A competitive swimmer all his life, Andreas Fott hopes the publicity will draw attention to the plastic waste problem. If I weren't swimming, they wouldn't be here. This helps us spread the message, so hopefully things will change. Because plastic waste is everywhere. But his swim is a science project too. Two chemists from his team will collect water samples all along the route starting where the Brigach and Breg streams converge to form the Danube. Here they filter 1,000 liters of water, looking for microplastics. Back in Ulm, here the Danube is a chilly 12 degrees Celsius. Fat is always accompanied by a kayak, not just due to the cold, but to ensure his safety too. His wife is also on hand at the start. A team of eight organizes everything, from energy bars to speeches, while Andreas Fott swims. I don't have to do this, but it gives me more influence to change things. I want to do something meaningful with my time on this planet. I want to use it sensibly, not just as a consumer. This is a positive contribution I can make to protect bodies of water. And it's not completely selfless, I admit, because I like to swim in open water, and preferably in clean water. But where does microplastic come from? How does it form? Like here in Gunsburg, the team holds educational workshops too. Fat rushes in to give talks, reciting the figures off by heart. Since 1950, when mass production of plastic began, we've produced 8.3 billion tons of plastics. Of that, just 9% is recycled worldwide. Microplastics can breach the blood-brain barrier. They accumulate in the brain and weaken our immune system. Yet we ingest plastic daily, even from salt mills. It's not just salt that comes out, but tiny fragments from the plastic. We put this in our food. Each week we ingest about a credit card's worth of microplastic, five grams. Tire wear is also a source of microplastics in the environment. Tire particles are washed from the streets into the sewers and from there to the rivers. Here, the brittle plastic in them is ground down further by rocks and the current. The team organizes cleanup sessions along the Danube, like here in Ingolstadt. Their schedule is packed, and Andreas Fott keeps giving interviews and forgetting how cold he is. <laughs> A hot shower. Now that really helps. Especially when you're really frozen. Up to this point, they've traveled by car and spent the nights in hotels. But now they'll continue by boat. Its captain, Edgar Wilhelm, jumped at the chance to help. There's still so much plastic floating around at sea. So what Andreas is doing, swimming these 50 or 60 kilometers a day, I think it's borderline ingenious. While Andreas is doing his duty in swimming by the Weltenburg Abbey in Bavaria, the boat is being converted to provide living accommodation for 10 people. The water is also getting warmer. Now it's up to 13.5 degrees Celsius. 
How long were you in the water? He had been in since 9.30. So six and a half hours. I think for more than 45 kilometers. The team is settling in. The MS Marbach will be their new floating home. They cast off for the first time. Captain Edgar Wilhelm has trained his novice crew overnight, and chemistry student Tim collects water samples every 100 kilometers. It's part of his master's thesis. The samples will go to Vienna, where they'll be checked for tire additives. Tire abrasion is one of the biggest sources of microplastics in bodies of water. They'll also be checked for residue from drugs, fertilizer and plasticizers, all contaminants which are difficult to filter out. The team will be on the boat for seven weeks. There are still 2,400 kilometers to go, but the stomach flu is going around forcing crew members to spend spells lying in bed. Andreas Fahrt has been spared that, but he has an even bigger problem. Tim, can you do something with the shoulder? The two neoprene wetsuits have rubbed his skin raw. Should infection set in, that would spell the end of his expedition. But Andreas Fahrt refuses to even think about that and just concentrates on swimming. Every day, a membrane is applied to his foot that resembles a piece of fish skin. It collects micropollutants in the water, so it's called a sampler. There are pesticides on it, plasticizers, artificial sweeteners, corrosive agents, antibiotics, radio contrast agents. The list is long. Whether they use membranes, filters, or depth probes, the goal is always the same, to find the toxic chemicals that wind up in the human body and even accumulate in the brain, but whose effects remain largely unknown. But sometimes Andreas Fath forgets about all that. For me, there's a ritual quality to swimming, which is why I do it rather than cycling or running. And once you jump in the water, you're underway in a three-dimensional space. Beforehand, you're grounded in two dimensions. In the water, you can move in all directions. And it carries you. When I have problems, stress at work or whatever, as soon as I enter the water, everything's easy. After two weeks, Vienna is in sight. Next, all the water samples collected so far will be offloaded and analyzed at the university. Fat's wife Nicola and son Moritz are back and will accompany him all the way to Bratislava. The whole family is into sports. After leaving Vienna, the river flows faster and grows wilder. This is one of the most dangerous stretches of the Danube, with cross currents and maelstroms. Suddenly, there's a rumbling sound. A rock. For a moment, we're stuck. These rolling lumps of rock on the riverbed act like a mill and grind down plastic in the water. After four weeks, they've reached the Iron Gates Gorge, just 1,000 kilometers to go. Here, the Danube runs through the Carpathians. It looks idyllic, but... The two chemists on board have set up their lab to monitor the water quality. They've seen some shocking results. In Belgrade, the water was really brown, cloudy, and even warmer. I won't swim in a place where the feces of 1.7 million people are fed into the water untreated. Sometimes the Danube is choppy, too. Despite the current, Fat makes little headway. Instead of his usual eight kilometers per hour, he manages just three. Still, the water's warm, 22 degrees Celsius. Luckily, there's a big lock in sight. Fat isn't allowed to swim through there anyway. <laughs> Only when the captain has found a place to drop anchor can he dig in, too. Everyone on board tends to turn in early. They're all tired out. 
months. <laughs> Two weeks later, just 500 kilometers to go. In Jaju, Romania, they're holding a workshop with school children. Here, conservationists are campaigning for a nationwide recycling system. It breaks into small little pieces, and you see this on the edges here. There's something missing. Uh, presentation. After a few more workshops, the team is packing up. Fat has entered the home stretch. He's just 15 kilometers from the finish. He's not home free yet. It's dangerous here, but the organizer prepared Fat's wife, Nicola, for that. Mario warned me before that lots of speedboats fly by and don't expect a swimmer to be here. And Andreas Fat is almost wistful. Tomorrow it's over. Sometimes it was nice, at least at the end. Sometimes it was more like torture. Twenty-seven hundred kilometers lie behind him. Analyzing the water samples will still take months, but what counts now is that Fat has made it. His son Moritz accompanies him for the final stretch. I know he's glad I'm here, and that makes me even happier. The old port city of Sulina and kilometer zero. They've reached the finish, but to take a photo to remember this special moment, they have to keep going on foot. Fat may have done all the swimming, but this really was a team effort. Finish. Finish. Yeah. It's team. Yeah. Now there's only one thing left for Andreas Fat to do, take a dip in the Black Sea. After that, it's back to lectures and lab work. <laughs>